So this is going to be a response to Fred uh, on his channel, Conference of the Birds, yeah, which is uh, the channel that he's chosen to post videos that uh, he doesn't necessarily think are worth posting on his other channel, Conference Report, where I guess he's, he's going to have some sort of a tier, uh, you know, a first tier and a second tier ranking system to decide which videos should go in, in which channel. Um, but uh, Fred and I have exchanged a few videos already about this idea of the evolution of consciousness. And uh, Fred has a lot of problems with this idea. Um, you know, he has a lot of problems, first of all, just with the way that I and a few others have been talking about the word itself, consciousness and evolution. But to start with consciousness, um, he thinks that there's been a bit of unhelpful mysticism. Um, and consciousness has been discussed in the context of some unhelpful mysticism. And he, Fred himself, wanted to distinguish that from helpful mysticism. So I'm kind of glad that uh, that he provided that avenue for me to, to try to develop you know, helpful mysticism. Because uh, when, you know, when we're dealing with, dealing with consciousness, I, I would say that it's a process. I'm not a thing, even though in our trying to talk about consciousness, because that's what we do, we talk about things, right? Um, in trying to talk about consciousness, we thingify it. And even in my own video, right after I said consciousness is a process, it's an event, it's something we're always already doing, uh, I then go and call it a thing, I refer to it as it. Um, you know, and this is something we have to recognize about our language, that sometimes it thinks us and we don't think it. But the fact that we know that we can think it, the fact that we talk about our language as if it were a tool that we are using, you know, this points to, uh, well, I would call that a sort of unhelpful mysticism. We mystify ourselves into believing that we are something apart from the interaction we have with each other and with the world, as if we could then use a tool called language, speech, in order to somehow grasp the world, somehow make it our own and control it and exchange it, give it value. But, you know, somehow language allows us to do this, or at least to talk about it as if we were doing it, to talk ourselves into thinking and feeling as if we were doing it, as if we were some sort of a separate mental substance existing somewhat outside of, though always necessarily in connection with, uh, an outside mechanical world. Somehow we talk ourselves in uh, to feeling as though we were an isolated, egoic, skin-encapsulated um, entity that had to confront an exterior uh, world of others which have no intrinsic relation to us. And we, we talk ourselves into this, right? It's not real. We know that because of the amazing things that reductionistic physical science has discovered about our universe, um, empirically and mathematically and experimentally. Uh, we know from quantum physics that no so-called particle exists uh, independently of any other so-called particle because they are also, when looked at from another angle, waves of probability. And the probability extends from the point, you know, the probable particle, to the uh, entire extension of, of the known universe. Um, and, you know, there's this principle in cosmology called the anthropic principle. And what it basically means, and it's kind of tautologous, unless you, you can understand it in, in the imaginative way that it's implied. It says that we can't know any universe except the one capable of producing us, producing beings capable of knowing it. Uh, and so one of the practical implications of this would be that, um, of course, we would be at the center of the universe if it were expanding. Uh, and that's in fact what we find. You know, I've made a video a couple of years ago that was called Copernicus Was Wrong, um, and which is only a, a sensationalistic way of saying that 
Um, in removing the Earth from the center of the universe, as Copernicus did to say it rotated, or, rotated around the sun, he was only offering a, a conditional truth, which was, you know, within its own domain as a response to the Ptolemaic system, which was um, an attempt to save the appearance and to prove, uh, you know, a metaphysical dogma that the Earth must be uh, stationary at the center. Um, Copernicus improved on that system, but he was wrong to say that the Earth is not at the center because, in fact, uh, you know, the known universe, we, we can only see so far uh, you know, because light can't travel back to us fast enough in order to give us access to whatever might be beyond the 13.7 billion year span which we can see. Um, because it makes no sense to say time has a beginning. You know, the Big Bang Theory uh, we pretend as if it, that's some sort of a rational explanation for the universe, but it's not. Because how can you have a before time? You know, we don't really have a scientific creation explanation. We have a creation story. And so in, in, in regards to cosmology, science can do no better than, than the Bible. Though, of course, uh, I think that if we use our imaginations and we admit that science is always telling stories, then we can in fact learn quite a bit from the empirical uh, discovery that modern science has, has made. Uh, the numerous empirical discoveries that science has made, for example, that we are, uh, that we have evolved that, uh, biologically, and that all life shares a common origin. Um, we, you know, we also know that somehow matter comes to life and matter uh, thinks, matter knows, matter is conscious. And you know, the reason why I, I like someone like Alfred North Whitehead is because he, in fact, remains a materialist. Um, but he just, as a thoroughgoing evolutionist at the same time, recognized that whatever mind is must be integral with whatever matter is, and that they must share a common origin uh, in time. Um, so mind and matter become poles in the process of evolution, um, and sort of dance partners that allow this dialectical process to unfold. Uh, and I think evolution is an unfolding. There is an order to the process. It's not merely chaotic. Uh, you know, somehow uh, some sort of plan is working itself up, out. And of course, the medieval explanation for how this could take place was that there was an exterior designer that set everything up in advance and then just, you know, as if it were some sort of a clockwork machine, set it into motion and let the dominoes fall. Um, I don't think we can except that sort of a picture. Uh, it's not that kind of a plan that's working itself out. Uh, it's a plan that we, as autonomous agents, must decide and then will bring into the world. Um, you know, what the modern age has done, the improvement that the modern age can make over medieval religion. Uh, is that no longer can God be some outside entity, some other, which is the authority over our own decisions. No, instead, we have to become the authorities which make our own decisions. We have to be reasonable agents, autonomous agents. And you know, reason is, is an individual revelation, whereas uh, for medieval and uh, you know, ancient uh, religions, um, revelation was the uh, the source of authority, but reason is revelation. Uh, it's just on the level of an autonomously thinking human entity uh, or consciousness. <clears throat> uh, but of course, it's not an entity. But at the same time, it is. You know, and I think quantum physics is related to consciousness because it shows us this uh, aporia that we reach when we try to 
understand reality at the most fundamental level. We don't know whether it's a, a, a thing or a whole process. Um, you know, you know, it's it's always going to end in a, in a paradox. Um, you know, our attempt to describe it, but I think it points to something. It all points to something. So if we're materialists and we say that no, it simply is what it is, it's just a dead, stupid substance, I think we forget that we're involved. We're coming to know it as that. And if, you know, we reflect on ourselves as knowers and discover that, wait, we can have a little bit more idealistic understanding, and that maybe that idealistic understanding will motivate us as, as beings in this world to transform it into what we think it ought to be. We are participants in the universe. So consciousness is a cosmic event. Uh, perhaps.